G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Helliborn. So, as Helliborn is a new game, fresh into early access and still in the alpha development state, I've taken a little time over the last few weeks to work out the most important things that we'll need covering. First up, we're going to be looking into the game's basic mechanics. In this video, we'll be looking over the classes of helicopter available in Helliborn and the roles they fill within the match. It's important to remember that Helliborn is a team-based, objective-focused game. You can shoot down as many helicopters as you like, but if you fail to play the mission objectives, you will lose the match regardless. Browsing through Helliborn's hangar, you will notice three icons, a triangle, a diamond, and a square. For the moment, these represent scout, attack, and air assault helicopters. But for the purposes of this video, due to how some roles vary within each of these brackets, we are going to need more. Helicopters in Helliborn can be loosely defined into four categories. Light scout helicopters, attack helicopters, transport gunships, and last of all, heavy transport helicopters. So first let's talk about light scouts. Scouts are fast and highly maneuverable, able to cross the map to almost any position rapidly. Their small size makes them very hard to detect when flying at low altitudes. Generally armed with only light weapons, light scout helicopters are unsuitable for direct assaults against fortified ground positions, but are very good at harassing freshly deployed troops or mopping up bases that have already had most of their defenders eliminated. Light Scouts do lack any airborne troops and as such are unable to capture bases, however, some do carry and can deploy specialist troops, such as the man-pad armed anti-aircraft trooper. In an air-to-air -air role, they work well as interceptors of heavy transports, and as harassers of attack and gunship helicopters that are attacking your bases. Notable examples of the Scout helicopter include the Soviet Mi-1MU and the Bell OH-13S. Key attributes of the Light Scout are speed and maneuverability. Use low altitude flight to cross the map to your target undetected and then strike quickly doing as much damage as possible without slowing down. Avoid all damage and withdrawal if necessary and you'll have your target scrambling to deal with you while the rest of your team is dealing with your enemy's bases. Next up we have the Mighty Attack Helicopter. The attack class is generally fast and maneuverable, although not to the same extent as the scout. Much like the light scout, the attack helicopter also lacks any airborne troops, but they are also unable to deploy specialist troops. This does limit their utility. What they do have, however, is firepower, and lots of it. They are tanks of the sky, able to get on site and deliver a massive hammer blow to enemy bases, fortified or not. In air-to-air -air combat, their devastating armaments can turn them into effective anti-air platforms with rotating nose turrets allowing wider arcs of fire or massive cannons and large clusters of unguided rockets able to simply overwhelm a target with damage. Armaments can range from turreted cannons, large caliber cannons, unguided rockets and air-to-ground missiles. Examples of the attack helicopter are the Boeing AH-64 Apache and the Kamov KA-50 Black Shark. Key attributes here are firepower and speed. Your best play with the attack helicopter is to learn to read the map, observe locations where your transport helicopters are, and strike enemy controlled bases close to them hard, clearing the way for quick and rapid base captures. During captures, however, don't forget to hang around. Your transports will be grateful for the air cover. Next up, we have the most flexible class in the game, the transport gunship. These really fit the term multi-role the best, as many helicopters in this class are just as heavily armed as attack helicopters, and in some cases more heavily armed. However, the difference in gameplay comes down to agility and utility. Transport gunships tend to be slower and less nimble than their attack and scout counterparts. In most cases, they lack any turret weaponry, only carrying forward-firing weapons, although again, this isn't true for all. The major difference, of course, is the crew. Transport gunships are capable of deploying small numbers of airborne troops to capture bases and secure objectives on the map. While these numbers are not always enough to fully secure a base, they are usually enough to get the base's anti-aircraft defences up and running, securing the airspace and allowing heavy transports to deliver additional reinforcements to maximise base strength. Helicopters of this category are also able in most cases to deploy specialist troops, to either set up ambushes on the map or assist in securing freshly captured bases. From the offensive side, the term gunship is very appropriate. Miniguns, heavy machine guns, cannons, unguided rockets are mass are all armament options enjoyed by this class of helicopter. Gunshipping bases defences on your own is definitely an option, but coupled with a good attack helicopter or in groups of two, gunships can support and assist laying waste to hardened bases in just seconds before securing them for your own team. 
Notable examples of the transport gunship are the Mill Mi-24 Hind and the Bell UH-1 Iroquois, or Huey for short. Last but not least we have the heavy transports. Often underrated and underutilised, heavy transports, when used correctly, can break an enemy team by forcing the objectives and constantly reinforcing bases that have been attacked, preventing their capture. While armament levels can vary from gunship level to being relatively lightly armed, transport helicopters true strength doesn't come from firepower, but manpower. Often carrying enough troops to fully secure several bases on their own without a need to return to base, along with the highest numbers of specialist troops of any helicopter in the game, a heavy transport in conjunction with an attack force to clear the way can allow teams to rapidly secure enemy bases in large numbers quickly. The downside is speed and detection range. These large helicopters are very easily spotted and their slow speed often leaves them vulnerable. While operating behind controlled lines in defence, it's usually okay. Escorts will be required for defence in any offensive place, however. Notable examples of the heavy transport include the Boeing ACH-47 Chinook and the Mill Mi-8 MTV. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the four core groups of helicopters that make up the playable aircraft of Heliborn. I do need to stress once again that Heliborn is an objective based game. The teams of players that work with one another and make the best usage of a combination of the above aircraft will always perform best and as a result are the most likely to take the win. It's also worth mentioning again that Heliborn is still in early access as an alpha under heavy development. While the above information is up to date at this time, changes in alpha games are common and as such I will keep you updated with any major changes in future videos. Coming up next for Halliborn on this channel will be overviews of each of the current maps, as well as a new series where we'll be going over the history and combat record of some of the rare and unusual designs of helicopters seen in Halliborn, some of the very early designs. Thank you very much for watching, as always please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you would like updates of future content on this channel. Until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.